Hi everyone, John Davenport here from Fogropoly.com with another Let's Edit video. This week on Let's Edit, we're going to look at the difference between a raw file and a JPEG file. I get the question all the time, and a lot of people, you know, still kind of want the answer to it. Um, I don't think that I'll solve the question here for everyone, but um, I'm going to present at least, you know, my take on it and give you the reasons why I shoot in um, raw instead of JPEG and why I enjoy processing a raw file over a JPEG file. Um, so the way that I'm going to do that is basically I've created a JPEG file from this raw file. So what I did was I, you know, have this raw file here and I literally all I did was I applied a daylight preset to it which you know you would do in your camera say you were shooting um, you know um, and you had your camera set to a uh, certain white balance you know that's what you would end up with and then if I click over here to my JPEG version you can see these are identical photos the only difference is that this photo is a JPEG file and you can easily tell that um, just by clicking on the white balance tab here and you can see all you have is as shot auto and custom whereas back here over on the raw file we have our familiar um, you know handful of different presets plus our temperature and tint sliders are in the uh, familiar um, scale as opposed to over here on the JPEG where they are zeroed out and they go from minus 100 to plus 100. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this raw file. I'm going to keep it in the daylight setting here to be consistent with the JPEG file that I processed earlier and and then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sync everything over so that um, all the other settings will be applied to this JPEG photo and we'll kind of just compare the differences. Um, so let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do, um, as with you know many of the photographs of sunsets that I take, is drop in a uh, graduated filter here. I'm going to actually bring it all the way to the top here, which is, it seems weird at first, but uh, if for this particular photo, I think it works out well because we really need to get this whole tree to be um, kind of helped out by it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the exposure up just a little bit and I'm going to punch the shadows way up. And that will help, you know, when we go um, back into our basic tab to uh, get everything where we need it to be. I'm also going to uh, drop the highlights down, which will help, again, keep the brighter areas of the sunset um, kind of in check for us. Uh, so that's looking pretty good for the graduated filter. And now we're going to just hop back into our basic tab here. So we already have our white balance set to daylight. Uh, so I'm going to skip over that and then I'm going to come down here to my exposure and uh, you know the presence and everything and, and we're going to work on that. The first thing that I think I'm going to do is I'm going to raise my shadows up. And you know that's going to do a little bit. I'm also going to raise my exposure up just a little bit, just enough to get, you know, a lot of light uh, in the, the scene here. Uh, and then I'm going to drop my highlights back down, which will help reduce um, all that detail that we lost when we raised our uh, exposure up. I'm going to also drop the whites down, which will again help control this particular area. And I'm going to raise the blacks just a little bit just to kind of bring everything in. And I'm going to add a little bit of contrast, not too much, uh, just a little bit there. And maybe just a little bit more to the exposure. Uh, so that's looking pretty good. We can hop quickly back into our graduated filter from before. And I think I'm going to add just a little more exposure there and drop the highlights down just a little more as well. Mm, and that's looking pretty good. If you look at your at the histogram now, we're in pretty good shape. You know, everything seems to be in here. Our histogram drops off right at the blacks and again right at the whites and we have a nice concentration in the middle here. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. Let's just zoom in on, you know, any area here and I'm going to come down to my detail tab and add a bit of sharpening. 
so maybe you know something like that um, to get the overlays I'm holding down the option key um, on a Mac it'll be uh, the alt key on a Windows PC um, so I'm going to add some radius detail which as you can see will start to define the harder lines so the tree line in the back and the really hard lines of the trees in the foreground uh, the detail tab here will start to define the smaller of the lines so I'm actually gonna drop that down a little bit um, I don't want those lines to be too defined uh, something like that and then we're gonna just mask in a little bit here maybe about 55 or so which will apply the masking to more of the harder lines and not so much to the um, finer lines and then I'm also going to just apply a little bit of noise reduction and I'm also going to come down here to my lens correction tab and I'm going to just check my remove chromatic aberrations which um, you know there there are a little bit you can you might be able to see that there's a little bit of that pink fringing here and once I click on this it kind of disappears um, so you know that does a good job and then we'll zoom back out and we have a uh, pretty much a finalized edit um, so, uh, you know, that's a pretty good start, um, and, and uh, you know, as far as editing this photo goes, I think it came out pretty good for a very quick edit. Uh, we have a lot of detail in the, um, in the background here, which we um, didn't have before. If I go to my before image and zoom in, you can obviously tell that it's pretty much all shadows. So, um, we did save a lot of it. Um, I think uh, that... Uh, we're in good shape so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both photos in Lightroom and I'm just gonna click the sync button and I'm gonna de-check the white balance because um, we don't wanna um, you know bring anything over this was already applied as, uh, before and I didn't touch it before so we can just leave it at that it shouldn't make a difference either way but I'll just de-check it and and then I'm gonna leave everything else checked and that's basically going to copy everything over. Um, actually, you know what? I changed my mind. Let's leave the white balance check. That way, everything from this photo is brought over to that JPEG file. And then I'm going to click Synchronize. And then we'll page over to our JPEG file. And you can see pretty clearly there is going to be a difference. Um, one of the biggest differences that you'll notice is the white balance. Um, and as I mentioned before, that's mainly due to the way the white balance works. Uh, we can try and see what just bringing this back to zero is, because for some reason it did change the white balance. Um, so, you know, even the, even the unchanged white balance, so this is the daylight setting that I had originally processed the photo with. This is the original JPEG file. And as you can see, there is a little bit of a difference still. Um, it's not as dramatic as it was when I synced it, so maybe there was a little bit of a change uh, when I did that synchronize. Um, so we'll just leave it like this. But anyway, um, besides the white balance issue, if you go back to the raw file, and let's just zoom in on this particular area here. So we have these pine trees in the background, and we have this um, tree right here that's in pretty much full fall color in the foreground. Uh, and this is the raw file, keep in mind. So we have some pretty good detail here. The before image, obviously we had almost nothing, especially out of this uh, tree in the foreground, you couldn't even tell it was there. Now, if we jump over to our JPEG file, what you'll see is that there's just not nearly as much detail um, in this particular area of the photograph. And you know, it's throughout the whole photograph, it's just I picked this area because there's quite a good um, example of it, especially in these trees in the foreground. Again, you have a very similar before image where, you know, everything's, you know, missing from the foreground. But um, with the raw file, you are able to just pull so much more of that detail out um, from the shadows, so to speak. So, um, you know, you can get a pretty good edit. I mean, it's not like this JPEG file is an unusable, unprintable edit from what we had. It's definitely an improvement and it definitely is a worthy photograph. Um, but if you 
have the raw file and you have the capability of shooting in raw, I just highly recommend it. I think it's so much more versatile and storage space is um, so cheap these days that it really doesn't matter that the files are that much larger um, with the benefits that they have. So that's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this particular Let's Edit. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts on the raw versus JPEG. Uh, battle that will probably go on forever and ever until one of those two forms of um, file saving dies or another uh, form is invented. Anyway, thank you for watching, have a good one, and I will see you uh, in the near future again with another Let's Edit video. Bye for now!